Welcome to Joel Asset News, take a top story using cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, got some pretty good stuff. First up, stealth phase over why Wall Street FOMO will make 20K Bitcoin look cheap. This is a fantastic article written by Alan Scott, and it looks at what is going on behind the scenes as everything in the background is being accumulated secretly, but not so much anymore. Also, how about that election, huh? Well, blockchain voting is the alternative for trusted democratic elections. We're going to take a look at what are the options and what we can do, hopefully, next time. And we're going to do a cue of the day from Lucas. And Lucas asked the question is, is everything outside of Bitcoin a scam? And I've got just the guy to answer that question. So we'll go over all that. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is Saturday, the 14th of November. It looks like it's 11 a.m. Texas time. Everything's a little bit of a slide, but uh, that is to be expected in the crypto asset game. We're not going to go up forever. There's going to be a little bit of uh, peaks and valleys, and today is one of those days. So Bitcoin is down almost 2% and has slumped below the 16K mark. It looks like we're at 15.8. So um, not surprising. I actually would be surprised if it didn't fall down a little bit more. Ethereum is at 450, but hey, still sticking there. So I'm pretty happy about that. Down two and a half percent and uh, not too bad. Tether still around 17.7 billion. So that's pretty great. XRP is still at 26 cents. And yesterday I said, hey, congratulations to all the XRP holders. And someone said, this is the first time I've heard you say anything positive about XRP. Now, if I've been very tough on XRP, it's because I'm one of those people who has bought it a long time ago. I think XRP could do something. I think it could be great. I just, uh, there has to be a lot of things to happen for that to happen, to actually uh, make it. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. But uh, it really is to me just disappointing right now. He's like that talented kid on your football team that could do so much. Just hasn't really done it, but uh, we'll see what happens. Chain legs down one and a half percent. Looks like it's around 1250, up 2.7 for the week, so that's not too bad. Hopefully, it can hit a 13 dollar mark, and off we go. Bitcoin Cash, nothing. Polka dot, not too much. Uh, ooh, Litecoin's down five percent. 3.7 for Cardano, two percent for. Uh, what is up? Let's just let's just ask that question. What's up? Uh, Uniswap is up. Hey, it's almost at uh, almost at four. I'll take it. 44 percent for the week. Fantastic. And of course, Celsius is almost going to hit uh, $2. Actually, it's $1.90, so 3.7 for the day, uh, 2.4. But remember, it did take a big hit, or a little bit of a hit, from yesterday uh, because there was some issues with the website and the app and DNS propagation and blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go into it. Watch yesterday's video. I'll explain it all in detail. And uh, that's what's going on. So what else is there? Anything? Geez, synthetics down 7%. That's pretty bad. Compound up 8%, 21% for the week. So congratulations, all you compound holders. Uh, looks like you're one of the few winners for today. All right, let's break into today's top story. So first up, stealth phase over. Is this what's going on as far as Wall Street FOMO? And this is the kind of impression I've gotten because when I, in 2017, Nobody in the institutions really talked about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. It was just kind of like, that's dumb, that's stupid, and uh, no one would ever do that. And uh, even the banks were, and would talk about firing their employees if they invested into it. But now it seems like Wall Street and big institutions and big legendary players are like, yeah, makes sense. So I think if they were accumulating secretly, P.S. I think they were. Uh, the cat's out of the bag. And I think there's going to be some fireworks in 2021. It's what I've always said, but uh, we will see. So this is a fantastic article by Alan Scott. So let's see what he's got to say. So price of Bitcoin is up 125% year to date, even though it's down today. Not too bad. Making it once again the best performing asset just it has been for the past decade. And if you don't know, uh, Bitcoin to a lesser extent, Ethereum is uh, one of the top, or not, if not the top, uh, assets uh, for the last decade. And also, if you can take a look at it of all time, it's uh, beaten gold, it's beaten any stock, oil, anything like that. And it's why I'm heavily invested into it. But the question is, is Wall Street here? Well, they're saying that it's not here yet in droves. It is here, in my opinion, but just not to where it should be. And it's going to change. It's going to change. We're going to talk about it in a second. So it goes on to say, remember 2017? Well, it was fantastic, except for when the CME introduced their cash settled Bitcoin futures right at the peak in December 2017. And then boom, everything crashed. And if you're if you're into uh, what you thought could have happened or why it crashed, this was one of the things that people point to. CME introduced uh, cash settled futures, but there was other, a lot of other factors in there. I think it was it was just too much too soon. It wasn't really built on you know anything concrete. It was on shaky ground. It was all white papers, vapor, and hope. So I think these days we're in a little a much better position, in my opinion. 
And then they talk about Google searches for Bitcoin uh, pretty much tell the whole story. And uh, interest over time, you can see from here, this is uh, in 2017. Actually, I'm just going to show you. Uh, here is, I pulled this up. This is the, the Google Trends. And Google Trends is not going to, it's not going to tell you the exact amount of searches right here. You can do that in AdWords if you do a bunch of ads and such. But for here, it's just going to tell you like over time. So if you're looking at the last 12 months, on a scale of 0 to 100, uh, on May 10th to May 16th, that's when it was at the highest amount of searches. Now today, we're looking at 72. So, and you can see it's, uh, you know, done pretty well over a little bit of time. But what I want you to take a look at is this. So, we're, I mean, just think about this, first of all, right, before I show you. Uh, it's been on the minds of everybody. It's been on CNBC. It's been, been on the media. It's been on the, uh, the hearts and minds of the big investors and legendary traders and all those things. So you think like, oh, this is a pretty big thing. Uh, well, not so, because look at this trend from 2004 to uh, today. Of course, it's flat. Nothing really happened back then. This was the peak. The absolute peak was December 2017. And again, it wasn't built in anything. It was very shaky, in my opinion. And then here's where we are right now. We're at a whopping 19. So out of 0 to 100, we're at 19. What do you think is going to happen in 2021? Now, again, this is just Google searches, but it really does play a part and let you peer into the minds of what people are thinking and searching. And if this is any indicator, we got a long way to go. But while the public is largely unaware, several wealthy investors are heralding Bitcoin as a new asset class, like we were talking about, P.T. Che, Paul Tudor Jones, Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy, and Stanley Druck in Miller have made waves in 2020, revealing their positions. Jones said investing in Bitcoin is like investing in Apple early. Saylor uh, from MicroStrategy stated that his company, MicroStrategy, would bought up 425 million and would hold it for 100 years, calling it the world's best collateral. Not only on top of that, Saylor also said that he feels no respect for any traders because he's like, what are you doing? You're stupid. Just hold on to it. It'll be fine. That's his opinion. I think if you want to trade, go right ahead. Uh, also, Drunken Miller. I say Drunken Miller like that because I always call him Drunken Miller and people are like, it's not Drunken Miller. It's drunk. So, okay, I always slow down. Drunken Miller. The latest big name Bitcoin convert now argues that if the gold bet works, the Bitcoin bet will probably work better. And as Tyler Winklevoss put it, Bitcoin is better at being gold than gold itself. And I couldn't agree more. Also, uh, for all the gold bugs out there, just remember this. Gold is pretty great. I mean, I own gold, silver, Bitcoin. Uh, I think everybody should own gold, silver, Bitcoin. But if you're looking at asymmetrical investments, gold is not where it's at. Gold is only up 23%, which is a monstrous year for uh, precious metals. But in crypto, that's like a Tuesday. So it's not a big deal. Uh, but for gold bugs, it is. Gold is up 23% in 2020 during a year of global economic upheaval. And remember, it came down to massive money printing from the Fed. The stimulus package was in the trillions of dollars on top of a, a global pandemic and gold went up 23%. Remember, gold is supposed to be a hedge for like economic collapse and it still only went up 23%. So I'm just saying, you know, gold is great, but uh, you know, you should really look at Bitcoin if you're on the fence and you're here, welcome. <laughs> Individuals who bought Bitcoin 10 or even five years ago would most likely agree. The end of Bitcoin stealth phase. This is where it gets interesting. Bitcoin is becoming particularly attractive as a hedge against inflation, which is all but guaranteed by the U.S., of course. Federal Reserve likes to print. And uh, if you are any uh, uh, have been looking at the news, um, Jerome Powell, the head of the um, Federal Reserve, states that, hey, we're going to keep printing. He didn't say we're going to keep printing, but he's like, we're going to use all the tools at our disposal and more economic relief is on the horizon or something like that. I paraphrase a little bit, but you get the drift. There's going to be more printing and there's more printing. There's more. That's quantitative easing. There's more for the dollar to recede as far as the value. And it's also going to cause a little bit of turmoil. Great opportunity for gold, Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, digital assets. But uh, getting back to the story, unlike gold, Bitcoin is absolutely scarce. We keep finding more gold. That's just the truth. We will never find more Bitcoin. It's not like you're going to go out there and like, oh, where did I place that Bitcoin? Check under the couch. Oh, there it is. No, it's only 21 million. That's it. That's all it ever will be. So this is a great little image of, of uh, valuation and stealth phase. 
versus the <laughs> I didn't see this the blow off phase is pretty funny. So the stealth phase is when people are like just hoarding and kind of just slowly accumulating, which we all knew they were doing. We all knew J.P. Morgan was doing that. They you know Diamond is such a liar. He's gonna say out in the in the front go, "We're not doing anything. I'm gonna fire everybody." And the background is like, "Hey Pete, did you make sure you bought that Bitcoin?" Yes, we did, sir. And then off we go. So like when the stealth phase, they don't want to tell you what they're doing. But at some point, the cat does get out of the bag, and that's why you got the PTJs, you the Drucken Millers, uh, the micro strategies, and all the big players going, hey, we're buying right now, just let you know. And uh, that's it. So we're at this, we're, I think we're past that. That only makes sense. So now we're starting to see a little takeoff, which we saw, right? I mean, Bitcoin is up on 25% for the year. That's only makes sense. Now we're going to start to see what it's going to be a little bit of a sell off. And then that's where people, the weak hands, not me and you, uh, weak hands are going to start to sell and go, oh, it's it's, it's dropping. I got to get out now because it's never going to. But those are the people who don't understand how valuable crypto and digital assets really are and how it's going to change everything. And it's going to be 10x bigger, maybe 100x bigger uh, than the Internet revolution in the, in the late 90s. So they're going to sell off. And then people are like me and you are going to buy up because we know what time it is. And then this is going to do this, 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 this. The problem is, and this is the problem for me. I don't know what's the problem for you. But I made this mistake in 2017, which is when everything becomes overvalued and the RSI is like super, super overbought for days, weeks, or however long it takes, when to kind of time it. And the best thing I can tell you is watch my bull run strategy where I talk about, you know, the different price points i'm going to try to take profits i will never sell all my cryptocurrency but there's going to come a point where i need to because i don't want to do this bag holding nonsense like i did for like two or three years it just only makes sense so if this looks familiar to you it's happened over and over and over again it happened in 2017 i think it's gonna happen again in 2021 could be wrong let me understand in the comments section moving on we'll finish up and this is just a quote just echoes what i've been talking about with uh, Drucken Miller, Michael Saylor, and more listed companies jumping into the Bitcoin markets, it's quite clear that we're at the early stage of a new bull cycle. Well, sure. And this was a really great paragraph right here. It states, in addition to the halving, the aforementioned investors have also noticed that Bitcoin's fundamentals, network activity, and on-ramp infrastructure, e.g. the Cash App and PayPal, have all significantly improved since 2017. That's the truth. Uh, I remember in 2017, you, I mean, you can get it at Coinbase and Binance and some other places, but there were so many people that Coinbase shut down from taking new uh, customers and Binance did the same thing. I remember people were selling their Binance accounts on like eBay or, or wherever they were selling them, I forgot what it was, and there was nothing in them. They just said, you want an account? Well, you got to pay me X amount of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was crazy. So that is not the case these days. Other investors will also eventually realize that a small allocation of capital into Bitcoin significantly boosts portfolio returns. Last month, the co-founder of 10P Holdings, Dan Tapiero, noted this. And this is a smart phrase. It says only 3% Bitcoin positions in the past five years would have increased performance of a 60-40 portfolio from 6.8 to 10.2%. Imagine that. Imagine when all the advisors start to talk to their customers and be like, look, Pete, here's what's going on with, with, with your portfolio. Um, didn't do so hot this year, but there's a new asset. That's really not new. It's like, you know, 12 years old now. And uh, we can offset it. It's a little bit risky, I suppose, but it is the best performing asset of all time. So maybe we could put a little bit in there, like like I said, 2 to 3%, and we can offset some of these losses that uh, we're going to see, especially what's going to happen in the next year or two to come because the stock market is probably going to crash. If they can do that, and they, they recommend that to all the people that they have, um, this could be a huge boom. And not only on top of that, uh, the SEC has just given clearance for banks and different institutions to start to custody Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. We talked about this yesterday. So uh, this could be a big boom. And I would think that if you're a advisor, an investment advisor, and you don't recommend this, I think you're doing your customers a disservice. I'm just saying, because you could have been up mightily. I mean, you could have been in gold at 25%, but you could have been going in Bitcoin and been up 125. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. At this rate, investment fund clients will begin asking the questions such as this. Why is my nephew's Bitcoin stash outperforming my 401k, my FANG stocks, my Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, and Facebook? Uh, why is it outperforming uh, gold? And Warren Buffett put together, how do I gain exposure to Bitcoin? And this only makes sense, right? People are going to start to look at this, and it's, 
especially the older generation, which really has all the money. The baby boomers have all the money, and then uh, the Gen X or the millennials, their second, third, fourth, fifth place, whatever you want to say it. But you now when you start to look at it and just kind of break it down, institutions are here. They're going to start to really gobble up a lot before the average investor uh, can get into it. I mean, we've got Philly Digital Assets, a trillion asset under management, TD Ameritrade with $1 trillion. You've got the big gold bugs, Van Eck, who said, look, gold is better or Bitcoin is better than gold. And here's the proof. And they put out a PDF not too long ago. You got Grayscale buying up everything out there. You got the PTJs out there, the legendary investments and traders and going, hey, I'm going to put my money into Bitcoin, uh, Druck and Miller as well. And on top of all the different public companies who are making money hand over fist, look at MicroStrategy. They just invested 425 million a couple months ago. They're at 606 million. Do you not think that other companies are gonna look at this and go, wow, what are we doing? Our money is on fire and everybody else is making a ton of money. We should probably get into this. It only makes sense. I'm just saying. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up. Um, this is a passion project of mine. I know some people don't care, but <laughs> I always cover it. So voting. Um, if you see what, if you're outside of the United States, uh, we're going through a little bit of a turmoil right here. People are talking about election fraud and different problems with the election process. So I'm not going to get into it. Uh, this is not a political channel. I don't care. Um, let the courts settle that. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. But I will say this: we could have avoided all this nonsense by just using blockchain voting. I mean, come on, this is stupid. So this is a pretty good uh, article by Tatiana Reveredo. I think I said that right. Due to social isolation, a large number of American voters opted to vote by mail. That's true, right? Hey, if you can't get out, you want to stand in line, don't want to get the coronavirus. I don't care if you think it's real or not. Maybe you just don't want to go out, so you voted by mail. Great, which increased voting counting time i think georgia is still voting by by hand which is crazy led candidate and acting president donald trump to judicialize the electoral process with actions in several states and triggered intense debates about the veracity and legitimacy of the current american electoral system currently many have proposed mobile voting as an alternative more compatible with current times allowing people to vote without leaving their homes i think this is awesome i do everything online right i order my groceries I pay my bills. I pay my vendors. I can open up my bank accounts. I've got friends who are in the Sergeant Major Academy. They can open up legitimate government classified documents via the internet. I mean, pretty much everything you think of, we can do on the internet. I just don't understand why we can't do voting. I mean, come on. So how does one make mobile or remote voting possible without compromising the security of electoral participation? Blockchain. Um, I'm not going to read the rest because it really just comes down to blockchain. Well, actually, no, I'm going to read this last part. It's pretty good. The combination of sequential hashing and crypto and a distributed structure allows for the protection of voters' identity and the verification of absolutely all votes entered in the blockchain platform, which can enable secure and transparent voting mechanisms without electoral vote monitoring. So this is a great article, but I know uh, people don't like to get bogged down with the minutia. So I will just say this. I interviewed the CEO of Votes, Nimit. Really nice guy, soft-spoken, uh, pretty smart gentleman. And we went over the whole things about, well, you know, how can we protect the identity? How can we make sure that it's not hacked? How can we make sure that it's accessible to everybody? And how do we make this all work? And how do we get it out to the masses? And it was, I mean, all the questions were answered right in this one. Now, it's very long. It is uh, 50 minutes. Uh, hopefully, you can get to uh, the meat and potatoes of it. But it's fascinating, and it, and it makes total sense. He's not talking about online voting. He's talking about using an app and keeping everything super secure. And then on top of that, you can also check your vote going uh as soon as you do it, and then afterwards, and then after the election's even over, you can go back and look on the blockchain to make sure that it was counted that way. And as far as the security and the uh, anonymity, uh, it really is contained with it. And what was interesting to me was that it, this isn't like pie in the sky, like something that, that could happen. Uh, they've already done this in several U.S. states. Uh, West Virginia enabled mobile voting via blockchain uh for federal state and federal elections in 2018 denver colorado utah county utah and two counties in the state of oregon uh they also did the whole process and most of it i think if most if not all was all through votes so they've already done there and done that um the question is why can't we move this along because we should anyhow um i'm gonna link this video at the very end of today's video so you can check it out if you want to but to me it was fascinating because i love this stuff
All right, so that's it for that piece. Let's move on. Next up, Q of the Day. This is a pretty good one. Uh, it's about Lucas because uh, he was talking about Max Kaiser. Max Kaiser thinks everything's a scam outside of Bitcoin. Sure. So I had to answer the question, and uh, I didn't answer the question. Actually, it was Richard Hart. So right. let's Hello, jump. and welcome back to Q of the Day. So the Q of the Day, it's a pretty good one. Uh, and actually, it was a Q that, was, that came to me uh, in October. And uh, there's a reason why I'm getting to this right now. I'll give that in a second. So this is from Lucas. He is from Switzerland. Oh, Lucas. And he says, uh, hey, Rob, first of all, I want to say thank you for your work. Really enjoy watching your videos and getting your insights. Thanks for watching. Uh, thank you all for recommending Celsius. I uh, both received $20 bonus, which is great, right? Uh, if you're looking to sign up for Celsius, check out the uh, link in the description. $20 if you sign up, $20 for me and you. Win-win. Great. He says, I stumbled across a video from Stansberry Research, link below. I'd really like to get your opinion on Max Kaiser's statement that all altcoins, including ETH, are exit scams. Sure. I know you're invested in altcoins just like I am. I think it's always a good idea to get a contrarian opinion from somebody who does not see the world like we do. How would you react to the statement in Daniela's shoes? Might be. Am I right? So this is a good question because it's a question that uh, this gentleman, Lucas, is going to come across. And a lot of people are, especially with what's going to happen in 2021. And uh, you know, PayPal getting in the fray and allowing everybody to buy cryptocurrency digital assets. So uh, this uh, was answered pretty astutely uh, by Richard Hart. And uh, somebody had reached out to me on Twitter and said, "Hey, Richard would uh, be able to answer any questions you should have on your show." I said, "Sure." You know, so I reached out to Richard. He said, "Yeah, come on on. Uh, he's going to come on." And I think this was perfect because uh, Richard is a programmer. And he's done different things. Now look. Uh, Richard is a uh, controversial figure in the cryptocurrency digital asset space. There's no denying that. He has a product called Hex, which some people uh, have said it's awesome, and some people say it's a scam. So it's like everything else out there. And remember, Ethereum was also called a scam at one point, so just take it with a grain of salt. And before I even start, I will just say this. Uh, I will not be investing into Hex, not because I think it's a scam, or it's a bad project or whatever else, I just don't understand it. And uh, on, my ch on my show, on my channel, I tell you about the things that I invest into and why I invest into them. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of different things that I've passed on that went on to make a ton of money. There's a lot of things I've passed on that went to absolute zero. So I can't tell you what to do. I'm just gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. But uh, Richard does answer these questions uh, fantastically. And uh, let's just get into it uh, right now. Uh, Richard, so tell us all about how Bitcoin isn't the end all be all, how all mm -hmm. coins can make it and tell us about hex because guess what? Sure. I don't really know too much about it. Easy. All right. So then just, yeah, I'm recording. We should go. You ready now? Yeah. All right. Hi, my name is Richard Hart. I've got uh, like 65 K followers on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Richard Hart win like 45 K on YouTube, uh, youtube.com forward slash Richard Hart. I founded the world's first uh, blockchain time deposit which is pretty amazing. If you want to make uh, the world a better place and replace the banks and the banksters and their high fees and bad hours and shady things that they do with a peer-to-peer -peer replacement, someone has to build it. So I built it. Bitcoin was invented to attack currency. In the United States and China, there's about seven, rather $5 trillion of printed money, but there's $7 trillion in time deposits. So it's actually a larger market so the thing that I invented, Hex, as a side effect of doing time deposits very well, it also does currency better. So it's not designed to do currency, but it does it better than Bitcoin does with higher throughput, lower fees, better price performance, uh, more features. It's like, it's really, <clears throat> Bitcoin hasn't been improved in 10 years. In 10 years, you've got, you could only do one thing with it. You can press send and it makes your number go down and it makes somebody else's number go up. And that's it. That's all you can do. So if you want more than that, if you want to be able to lock up your funds and get paid interest and get paid a reward for locking them, Bitcoin will never, ever, ever do that because it only mints new coins to incentivize miners to pollute the environment and give that money to hardware manufacturers and electric companies. And that's all it will ever do. It's okay. It's, it's the security model as it is, but it's been 10 years and improvements can be made and they're being made all the time. So if, you know, Bitcoin doesn't do the most volume in crypto, Tether does. Bitcoin, uh, if you want to get out of it and protect your fiat value and get into a stable coin, you, there's no stable coins of Bitcoin. 
there's tons of stable coins in Ethereum. Seven of the top 11 cryptocurrencies by market cap were started on or primarily use Ethereum. TRX, BNB, EOS, USDT, Ethereum itself. Uh, I think there's one or two I'm forgetting, but sure. X, X is up there, top 20. Um, <clears throat> it's a proven system that has more features, higher throughput, lower latency, more security. Bitcoin's had two inflation bugs. One, they rolled back the chain. Somebody minted 6 billion free extra Bitcoin in 2010. They rolled back the chain. And then another one was just recently found about a year ago by a Bitcoin Cash developer. And this is the result of having spaghetti code with no spec that you can write to, no useful alternative implementations, no bug bounty programs, and no security audits. So why wouldn't you have problems with that? Whereas Ethereum has a bug bounty program. Hex has three audits, two security audits, and one economics audit. So we put more money and time into security, and lo and behold, we're more secure. So other cryptocurrencies have had inflation bugs, which is a fancy word for anyone could mint as many free coins as they want, and Hex won't, because our consensus code is isolated and locked in a place where you can't accidentally screw it up trying to improve something else, which is how the last Bitcoin inflation bug happened. But people, people don't know about security, and they don't know how bugs and software really happen, so they, th they think that having a higher hash rate protects you doesn't do anything at all to protect you. As a matter of fact, higher hash rates a protection racket. Who are you paying to not attack you? The only people that could attack you. You're not protecting yourself from some other party. It's just like when the mafia comes into your store and says, I'd be ashamed if there was a fire here, huh? Maybe you should pay us to protect you from that. That's what mining is. And guess what those miners do with that money? They pollute the environment and sell the price down. So Bitcoin miners get paid to sell the price. They don't buy Bitcoin, they sell it. They buy electricity and mining hardware. In Hex, stakers are paid to hold the price up. It's just wildly better, and which is the reason why if you bought uh, Hex on January 5th and held it till now, you'd have 50 times more Bitcoin. Do you want 50 times more Bitcoin? You love Bitcoin so much. Bitcoin's the best thing in the world. You're buying my bags that I bought for 30. You're buying them at 11,500. Go ahead. You can buy 50 times more had you gotten to Hex earlier. So any, anybody that says, you know, oh, I love Bitcoin more than anything. Well, if you really loved it, you would have 15 times more of it, 50, five, zero times more by having getting uh, gotten involved with Hex. And by the way, it's free. It's free for Bitcoin holders. If you had Bitcoin before, I believe, uh, December 1st, you get free Hex, literally free. And over $3 billion of Bitcoin holders have minted their free Hex with absolutely a wonderful experience. So, so Richard, it sounds to me, Correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but you are uh, in direct opposition to Max Kaiser by yeah. saying, yes, I believe that uh, Bitcoin is not the end all be all. It won't be right. the only thing we can ever use. And it will, <clears throat> and all the other altcoins are not the S coins. Well, it, it's, it's really this simple. If you're, if you're a coward and you want very little from the world and you don't have high expectations, maybe Bitcoin's enough for you. You don't want anonymity. Bitcoin doesn't have anonymity. Well, lots of other coins do, including Hex. Hex has uh, t.me forward slash Hex NATO. ZK snarks zero knowledge proofs on chain. Trustless, right? Bitcoin doesn't have stablecoin. Ethereum's got tons of stablecoins. Bitcoin just recently, there's more wrapped Bitcoin on Ethereum. Ethereum is acting as Bitcoin's layer two for scalability than there is in the Lightning Network, which just had a critical vulnerability which required people to upgrade or lose money a couple of days ago. It has had many. So Ethereum is doing better than Bitcoin was ever designed to do or hoped to do. You can do on-chain, the largest liquid market for a dollar to Ethereum pair in the entire world is on-chain, trustless, no AML, no KYC, no sign up. You want to get out of Bitcoin? You got to beg someone. Hey, I sent you my coins. Can you please send me something else back, please? Oh, you need selfies now? Oh, you're going to shut my account down because you don't like what I did with my money after I got it from you? That's the, the Bitcoin life. You want a 13-second transaction of Bitcoin? It's not available. You wait six confirmations an hour. Well, let's say you just do it in one confirmation. It's 10 minutes. But what do you think is faster, 13 seconds or 10 minutes? The mining hardware, like, it's more... <laughs> Ethereum murders Bitcoin, and price-wise and feature-wise, Hex murders Ethereum, even though Hex runs on Ethereum. Right. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing. It's like Ethereum is basically like a typewriter and then you can write a very nice novel, but if you don't write the novel, it's not there. 
So it's, it's, it's like a, it's a substrate that you're executing your economic game theory on. So Hex's economic game theory rewards the only thing in crypto that actually matters and the only thing in crypto that actually has adoption, which is buying and holding and holding for a long time. If you bought Bitcoin in 2017 at the end, you're still down 50%. Boy, that sucks, doesn't it? Maybe you're down 40% now. We're not at 12K. So you're, you're down more than 40% because it was 20K then. And that's three years ago. Is that Does that sound like a good store of value to you? It dropped 65% in a week or maybe two weeks a few months ago for COVID. Does that sound like a good store of value for you? And by the way, everything does that drop. Every altcoin... Bitcoin and every altcoin is going to continue to be volatile, and that's fine. Because if you want upside volatility, you've got to be able to withstand the downside volatility. You can't just have one. So if you've held uh, cryptocurrency for a long period of time, it's the highest appreciating asset class that's ever existed in the history of man. Right now, Bitcoin is up 1.1 million X from when it was a penny 10 years ago. 1.1 million times increase in value. Hex is up 116 X. It did it in four months. Now we got a dip. It's down uh, to 70x. Oh my God! I only made 70 times my money in 10 months. Oh, oh God! You got to be kidding me. What other place in the world can you get returns like this with no counterparty risk? No, there's no sign up. There's no ML. There's no KYC. There's no exit scam. There's no hope. Oh, I hope some guy builds something. I hope some guy does something. It's finished. It's complete. It's faster, more secure, more price performance, more features. Better everything, better domain name, better logo, better, like, you can't misspell it. Go ahead and misspell hex. You can't. Great stuff. So, yeah, so Richard, good explanation there for everything, right? About why Bitcoin's at the NLB also. Thank you. Before we, before we get into hex, let me ask you, is it, what is, let me ask you this, what is it going to take to overthrow Bitcoin to get out of the public time. consciousness besides well, and time and... <clears throat> So it depends, it depends on where, so this, it's a suitcase question. I got to break it apart. Right now, if you're a hedge fund and you want to buy $400 million or something, as some people have done, some guy named MicroStrategy brought, bought like $450 million of Bitcoin. If he wants to be able to get into that position without too much slippage, he needs a lot of liquidity, billions of dollars of liquidity. And if he wants to get out of that position, he needs billions of dollars of liquidity so he doesn't move the market against himself too hard getting in and getting out. So for a guy operating at that scale in cryptocurrency, really his only option is Bitcoin because the slippage is, is far too hard in other uh, coins. Whereas if you're a normal human being and you're only doing 100,000, 200,000, a million you don't need a billion of liquidity. You can you can get into and out of Hex or Ethereum or 100 other coins just fine with those numbers. And it really does matter, the, the scale that you're trying to operate at. So, you know, if you look at replacing finance, what percentage of finance is currency? 5% maybe? What's everything else? Options, derivatives, loans, time deposits. Time deposits, which Hex addresses, is the second most product, uh, second most popular product at the bank. So look, that's it for, th for that interview. And as you can tell, uh, Richard's got a lot to say. Uh, he has no shortage of opinion, that is for sure. So uh, that interview, without me interrupting him, uh, went 40 minutes, 44 minutes or something like that. So uh, for me to put that on Digital Asset News, uh, the YouTube channel, it would just take too long. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna chop it up. He answered the question, which I appreciate. He's gonna go more into detail uh, about Hex, and I'm gonna put that over on ban clips uh, so I can separate and segment these types of things. So if you're looking for that, uh, there's a, uh, a link. It'll be in the description. It looks just like this. And you can click on that and go over to Dan Clips and watch the rest of the interview if you're interested. So uh, that is it for Q today. Uh, thank you, Richard, for coming on the show and answering the questions. And uh, that is it. Let's jump. All right, so that's it for today. So thanks for sticking with me to the very end. <laughs> Interesting stuff, I'm sure. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, danteachescrypto.com. It is up and live and free. And you can find the link in the description of every one of my videos. It's at the very top, right underneath uh, the timestamps. And you can go and check it out. It's uh, We try to simplify everything, try to make things fast, very accessible and easy to find your answers right here. So uh, go ahead and check that out when you have time and that'll do it for today so uh, if you like these types of videos there'll be two months gonna pop up on your left and right uh, i'll pick one of them and then youtube will do its magic for the other one and uh, that is it so thanks for watching the whole thing appreciate it and i'll see you on